Welcome to this series on investigating the possibilities of big cats in Northern Ireland. And it's worth discussing now why this is a, a valid subject for us to investigate. Now, it's very important to say at this stage that this is not about shooting or killing animals. It's about observing them, recording them, and if there's something new and something which hasn't been seen before, then reporting it to the correct authorities, in this case, people such as the Forest Service Northern Ireland and the police, because this will provide them with information if we have something of genuine interest to them, something which le genuinely legitimises the whole idea that there may be big cats in Northern Ireland. And as you can see, looking through the um, some of these searches, these Google searches, it doesn't take a lot to find some, yeah, and for news, some records, some reports, including here by the police, uh, saying that, yeah, there are significant amounts of big cat sightings in the UK and here in Northern Ireland. And as you can see here, there's plenty around the um, Northern County Antrim area. These are mostly large black or sandy colored cats, um, puma-like animals, which is a mountain lion or a cougar by other names. And these animals are, of course, potentially very dangerous. They're also um, a potential hazard to livestock, to sheep and other creatures. So, however, if these are a genuine part of the um, natural environment here, then it's certainly worthy to protect these creatures and to start the whole debate and discussion in a genuine manner. There's also a possibility that there's links present in the UK, both Britain and Ireland. So these were indigenous creatures and they may still be here or have been introduced. It's worthy of note to say that I have found um, evidence of big cats in parts of England as well, particularly in the Sussex area up on the South Downs, and I know somebody who saw one, a large black cat. At the time she thought it was a very strange looking dog, but she um, was able to later identify it because there's distinctive cat features. And of course, if you see something which is not in your typical um, expectation, it can be very difficult to adequately describe it. Now, in that case, it walked straight past her growling. And that was very close to where I'd found a dead sheep um, within a, a quarter of a mile, in fact. So, and these are reported there through the Sussex, now uh, the South Downs really, the Sussex and Kent region very, very regularly. So remember, this is not about shooting or killing or skinning an animal or getting trophies or something like that. That this is purely about investigating to know better. It's in a sense, it's able to provide material for scientific study and investigation if this is done properly. And it's my hope that that will be the case. I would also state at this stage that these are, if they are here, these will be wild animals and they should not be treated lightly. I would never recommend an investigation at night in an area where you suspect a big cat may be. And if you do investigate, I would recommend doing it with somebody who knows the area, with somebody who is an experienced outdoorser, and if that's even a word, and that you make sure that you are safe and a potential animal is also safe as well. So the first thing I'm gonna do when considering looking for specific kinds of animals, particularly predators, is I'm gonna consider where to look. Now, large carnivores such as the lynx and the mountain lion, which may be present here in Britain and Ireland, will have large territories. Now, I mean, a lynx can have 
territory 20 to 50 kilometers, a, um, and in some environments, maybe more than that. A mountain lion, it will be considerably more, 500 kilometers maybe, or even more. So these are very important things for us to consider. So where is the space? Where is the food? Where is the environment? And as you can see here, we've got two ranges of mountains. We've got the um, on the, to the left of the screen, over towards Limavari, Magara, past this way, there are the Sparing Mountains, which are low population density, uh, very um, heavily forested for this region of the world. And over to the right, you have got a series of um, tall hills or low mountains known as the glens of Antrim and again it's the same thing it's a continuous belt meal of low mountains heavily forested a lot of heathland from all the way really from Loch Ney in the south here all the way to the coast and in between we've got two mountain uh, two riverine valleys particularly the Ban River and these kind of start up at Randall's Town and they go kind of either side of Ballymena, either side of Ballymoney, all the way up. And these again are, um, are separated by a small um, mountain, it's called Long Mountain, but it's you can see it in the middle of the screen south of Ballymoney. There's some forested areas there as well, and that I would see being the transitional zone between the mountain range on the east and the mountain range on the west. And when I say that mountain range, I'm using it in a very generalized term. So these are key areas that to begin the search, both in the, the zone between the two ranges and the ranges themselves. But there will be specific areas to look. If we're looking for a large predator, we need to assume that it's got a large area of territory and going into a large patch of forest where it will spend most of its time, you will never find the thing. So you're looking at the areas where it will transition from one space to another. So here in between two forests, one of the mountain ranges here is a good place to start. The transition between one forest to another, the open ground and the areas around that. So it's looking for the best place now between these two forest zones. And we can see here that, there, that that's the most natural route for an animal probably at night to take. Now here we can see close up view. Now we're looking for the easiest routes in, in the most plausible areas they will go. So this is lowland and this is where I think an animal probably at night will most likely travel through. So now we're looking for the most likely spots for hunting. Where would an animal like this likely hunt? So assuming it's going to take this path because it's the easiest path and the most easy to hide, where would it be doing its hunting, particularly on the edges of the forest? So let's take a look at some of the the best hunting zones and these would I would see would be the best hunting zones because they've got large they're on the outskirts they're close to sheep right at the edge of the forest there's lots of grassy areas and also we can see here in the top one um, there's uh, a river running or a small river running past it like a large brook and that means that animals will be coming there at the edge of the heathland here to drink. So these are great areas to look at. And if we zoom in on that top one, we can see here that um, it's fairly accessible from the road, it's very close to the river, and it's a great place to begin a piece of research. Narrowing in on this area, because of the location, it's got everything that we want, it's got the water particularly. Um, we can see that there are various both man-made and kind of natural divisions of this forest where it's mostly shaped by man but partly by water and other things. So this area will be the focus of our primary investigation to begin with. We're going to check it out, see what's there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to travel around the um, 
the edges of this forest because the predator will usually stalk close to the edge. It'll come out, it'll grab something um, when it comes down to drink or to graze at the grass around the edge of the forest and drag it in. And in my experience, most animal kills um, are found within about 10 meters of the edge of a forest. Sometimes they could be taken off a tree if it was a large kind of cat, you know, a leopard or something like this. But generally speaking, I would expect to find a kill dragged from very close to the edge of the forest. So this will be our main focus area, going around these red lines here to really ascertain is there any sign of anything there. Now, so what I, I'm going to begin with is I'm going to begin with traveling along this man-made road and exploring this general area, getting a general grasp of what is living there, what animals are there, seeing it again, traveling along some of the uh, edges of the forest before exploring the path um, along the edge of this river and this heathland. So that's going to be my primary goal and my secondary goal. But it's really important at this stage that we understand the animals we're trying to track down. Now, obviously, large cats are potentially dangerous. And that is a warning. Don't go into a situation where you feel your life might be in danger or with your dog or some other animal in, in danger, or even the animal itself. So these animals are active predators, they're hunters, they feed on meat, and a mountain, like, a mountain lion, also known as a cougar or a puma, they have been known to predate on humans and certainly dogs and other animals. So it's something to be very aware of. Never get in a situation where you corner one or where you seem to be threatening one in its own eyes. So remember, back away, um, make yourself look large, never turn and run, never turn your back on a, a wild animal, and um, slowly walk away backwards. Um, always make sure people know where you are, if possible, travel in more than one, uh, in a group of more than one person. But you can see here the difference in the cats, the, um, these are the two most likely species that we have in the UK, Britain and Ireland. The lynx in the foreground, pointed ears, short fluffy tail. It's quite a fluffy animal, it spends a lot of its time in trees, it's a danger to deer and sheep. Um, the mountain lion is a much larger animal and much more dangerous to humans potentially, unlike the lynx, which is um, much less likely to attack, I would, I would suggest, but it doesn't mean that you take risks, certainly. Um, it's got an S-shaped tail and it's got a bit of a, broad, uh, a less rounded face than a house cat and much more rounded ears. A, a house cat's got the pointed ears while a, a mountain lion has uh, much more rounded ears. Uh, classic yellow glowing eyes. Um, sometimes found in these large big cats, particularly at night when um, when reflecting light. And um, generally speaking, best to keep away from one of those if you feel in danger, if you feel that there might be one there, it's best to remove yourself from the situation. Now, in terms of looking for animal sign, um, I'm not going to look at the scat, the uh, the droppings. Um, you can find out the difference between a large cat and a dog online, as you can a lot of this information. And I would recommend searching online for as much information as you can. However, uh, I am going to have a brief overview here of the footprints, the different uh, kind of tracks left behind by these animals. Now, the first thing to say is that the dog usually has its claws out while the cat usually walks with its claws in. I think only the cheetah um, is the only cat that, that keeps its claws out when it walks, probably to help it grip when it runs. So um, these animals, uh, large cats, 
such as Coopers and the um, the links, they would have generally the same kind of footprint morphology. And I've got a rough example here on the right, no claws, pointed toe pads, and crucially, the three prongs at the back of the foot pad. The dog, however, is quite different. It's more of a triangular shape. It looks a bit like a fidget spinner, doesn't it, at the, uh, the pad at the back, rounded or oval foot pads and the claws. Now, some cats will, when they jump or they land on a slippery surface, will put their, cat, their claws out, but they will also, um, but they will always have three pads at the back of the foot, and that can be the decisive thing. Remember as well that the dog is usually a longer print, the cat is usually a wider, more rounded print, and you see one of the toes typically sticks, um, it's like its index finger normally sticks further forward. And um, the other thing to say is that you need to make sure that you are able to check out more than one print because it's possible that it can be the, an easy error can be made by checking out um, just one print. But if you check out the whole track or as much of the track way as you can, you will, if you see a consistent repeated print, then that will mean that you're le much less likely to make a mistake. Take photographs, record them, but remember, 99.9% .9 of tracks you come across are going to be dog prints. And that's the reality of it. It's easy to get excited by one print, but take a photograph of it and um, keep it. But that's a general overview of the tracks. There are other ways to tell if cats are about. They scratch with their claws on um, trees. They usually kill and feed in a different way to dogs as well. They're found in uh, usually on their own or like a, a mother and a cub, uh, while dogs are usually much more social in their interactions. So um, there are different ways to know. Cats will spend most of their time in, in like this kind of cat, will spend a lot of its time anyway in the trees, leave far fewer prints and um, that would be a general overview to cat and dog prints. Now in terms of the practical steps to getting yourself ready to go out and start investigating, please see my other videos on how to prepare and what to take.